This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, it's all about negotiation, diplomacy, and defending yourself. Because you're gonna be launching missiles up into the air and hoping to destroy your opponents by working deals with each other and, and trying to work together at some points, but sort of stabbing each other in the back in the other spot. Today, we're gonna be talking about Missile Command. This is from IDW, and it's part of their Atari game series line where they've taken popular Atari games and started making them into board games. Last year, uh, they did Centipede, and later on this year, they have others planned as well. This is for three to six player. It's a negotiation game. Let me show how it works, and I'll see you on the other side. Here we're set up for four players. Each player is going to have a city board in front of them and a player shield, which they'll be doing some secret planning behind their shield throughout the game. And so we have the four different players with the four different colors going in here. There's also gonna be a pile of missiles for each of the colors. And those missiles will be used to hit only the player that is that color. For example, pink is gonna get hit by their own pink missiles. So other players throughout the game will be buying pink missiles to just hit the pink player and so on and so forth. There's also some nukes that you can use. We'll go over those are a little powerful and there's some ways to intercept missiles as well and as you can see each player has the planning board behind and it has a shield with some rule summaries how much resources cost and you get some money that you'll be hiding back here and uh, let's go through how a round works so the first phase is the negotiation phase it's a timed three minute round where everyone is openly negotiating like for example I am purple and I might say, hey, you know what? Uh, you know what, pink, why don't you, you, you don't hit me and I won't hit you this round. Okay, that's great. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna buy a green missile. So I would spend the money for the green missile and everything's put in front of your board where everyone can see what you're buying that round. So if someone sees me buying a green missile, the green player knows that I could possibly hit them because you can only hit a player that is of the color of the missile that you bought and you can never buy your own missiles uh, of your own color. So I, people are seeing me buy things. Now you'd spend money uh, depending on missiles that are, are two bucks, uh, the nukes are 10 and intercepts for defense are five. So I couldn't have been buying all these in the first round because you only start with $15. Well, let's just say we do this and you know what? Uh, I made a deal with pink, but you know what? This pink player, she bought one of my missiles. We said, hey, what are you doing? I thought you bought, I thought we said you weren't gonna do anything. Well, I'm not, it's just for defense, you know, maybe for later. And so you're doing these things, but you can actively see what everyone's buying. Uh, and this is a timed three minute round. You can also uh, trade or sell uh, goods that you have from previous rounds. Like you might be able to f sell nukes or uh, you know, missiles and things like that. Yeah, now at the end of the first round, I wouldn't be able to have this much stuff, but let's just say this is what I have now. And you can basically plan, so this is the, this next phase is the planning phase. Everything's done behind your shield. All the stuff that you had just bought gets behind your shield and anything you had there from previous rounds are there as well. And you're using these to secretly plan where you're gonna hit. So you have, uh, like, I'm gonna be trying to hit the green player in their city number one. I'm gonna be trying to hit the blue player in city number three. And everyone's doing this and when you're ready, you give a thumbs up and then you finally reveal and then you will fire missiles. Okay, so now I have all the planning boards out to the, the next cities just like this. Now we would go through each of the ones. So first we would look at the number ones on each of them. So here, the uh, purple player is trying to destroy the green's number one, but the green player is trying to destroy the purple's number one. So they're both trying to hit each other in the same spot. And if that happens, both of these missiles collide and hit each other and don't do anything. But this player here and this player here also is trying to hit purple's number one. Uh, and so they would hit it. Now, if the player has an intercept, they could use one intercept, as many as they'd like, but in this case, I only have one, to block one of these. But I don't wanna do it, I wanna save it for later. Uh, and so these two players, these missiles would go back, and both of these players uh, would hit this. So what happens is this would get destroyed, and this would flip over. This is gonna give us an ability, we'll look at this closer in just a moment, and both players that hit it would get a victory point token, which are actually worth four points apiece at the end of the game. Now we see I am trying to hit the blues number three and they have it right there. And because I sent a nuke, what happens is not only does it destroy the number three, assuming they don't want to use any intercepts to block. Now they could use an intercept to block, it would block the nuke. And if they had a second intercept, they could use that intercept to block the missile. Now if this player had uh, was also trying to hit my number three, then what would happen is this missile would collide with the nuke, but then my missile would then go ahead and hit it. But let's just assume that we did this. Now what happens is uh, the, this hits number three 
and I get to have it hit one number higher or lower. So we could destroy number three, and then I can destroy either number four or two. Let's say we destroy two, and both of these get used up like this, and I would get two of these point tokens for destroying two of their cities. And you'd continue doing this until you get through the number six of everybody's and you go through, let's say this player got this one blocked by an interceptor, and that would be the end of that missile fire phase. Now to show you some of these abilities, look, these are all worth, at the end of the round, you're gonna get money based upon your city. So if you don't have any cities blown up, each of them are worth $2. So I'd get two, four, six, eight, ten. This one was blown up, but this one gives me one. So I would get $11, I would put it behind, and then we'd get ready to start all over again, negotiating this and that. But this one also gives me a bit, an ability. Now, at the end of the game, I'd score an additional victory point for every two missiles that I have. Instead of, usually it's every four missiles is a point. Now I can do it with every two missiles. However, let's go and look at some, what some of these other abilities would be. Now, the, the game would continue through all those phases that we just talked about until any at least one player has all of their cities uh, ex exploded. At that point, you'd stop the game and you would score. But let's look at some of these abilities. Like some of them uh, will get you actually more money than you start with, but they're not as powerful. Like in phase three, you can discard this city tile to destroy up to three incoming missiles a one-time use. So you could stop stuff, and but you'd stop getting money each round, a lot of it. Some of them are get you no money, but they're really... Uh, very powerful, like immediately gain two missiles of every other player's color from the supply. Or things like, from now on you can purchase missiles for one dollar instead of two. Or you can gain eight missiles from the player to your left uh, uh, color from the supply. So there's different abilities and they range from like really strong to not strong and they sort of balance out with how much money these get you at the end of each round. Now let's say it ended with somebody else having all six of their cities gone at the end of the, that round you would score and you're gonna get four points for each of the victory tokens that you got. Remember you get these from destroying other players buildings. You'd get one point for every four dollars you have. Nukes are worth nothing. You'd also get one point for each of the four missiles that you have. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, now obviously the thing I like about it is the nostalgic theme. Now I played a lot of Atari as a kid. This came out in 1980. I was about four years old when it came out. But as I got a little bit older, I played a lot of the Atari games and this was one of the ones I played as a kid. So it does have that nostalgic theme that I like and I think that a lot of other people will like as well. Uh, the game is really easy mechanically. It's mostly a negotiation game. Uh, we are working deals with other players uh, and I tend to like negotiation games. The, uh, you know, the people in my game group also really like negotiation games. We've played so many games with each other. We kind of know each other's triggers, if you will. We know how to get a rise out of people and using that information and working deals. Hey, I, I won't hit you this round. Well, then why are you buying one of my missiles then? Well, it's just for future. Yeah, sure it is. Uh, and so you're working these deals. You're trying to sort of form alliances that of course will get broken as throughout the game. Uh, any future deals are non-binding. It's pretty open. And I like sort of, I love those negotiation games that do have non-binding agreements that you can mess with people in the future, things like that. So the, the game is at the crux really a negotiation game. And I do like that they put the three minute timer on there. I can, you know, basically keeps things moving. Um, now, when you do a destroy one of those cities, I like how this, each of the cities has their own ability and a certain amount of money you'll get for that city because they're all defaulted as two money at the end of, of the round if it's not blown up. But if it is destroyed, you'll get a different amount depending on the ability. So you'll get some cool abilities and you'll get a certain amount of money. So you'll get more money if the ability is less or you'll get sometimes even zero money for that city if the ability is very powerful. And I sort of like that aspect of it because uh, it kind of the game starts to change as these abilities sort of come up and that's it's really the crux of how this game sort of works is as cities start getting blown up you start getting these uh, these abilities and you know different things will happen it will change your strategy it will change other people's strategies around you i like the aspect that there are those nice uh, looking nukes there that you can use and it's about threatening to use those grab those now they are expensive they're 10 bucks but when you have them, people are gonna, you know, you can threaten with those. Uh, and, and so I like that aspect of kind of using those even more for a threat than even using them. But you can build up to a big defense to deter them. So for five bucks, half of the nuke, you can get, uh, you know, one of the intercepts. So for the same price of one nuke, you can get two intercepts, uh, which could block a nuke and the missile that goes along with it. So it's about even trade there. Uh, but I like that you can sort of like build up you know, the defense and just let people, hey, let, let people know, hey, I got a big defense here. You might not want to come after me. You're going to waste your money. You're going to waste your missiles. Go somewhere else. It's kind of good to use that as a bargaining chip. Uh, I like how the game has a good arc to it because you you have this, uh, you know, everyone's the same at the beginning, but as those abilities, you know, come up, it's sort of like arcs up quickly to as players getting close to being completely expelled out of the game, which would end the game. Um, so I, I like how it has that interesting arc to the game. Now, what did I not like about it? Well, it is a negotiation game with 
uh, some fairly interesting ways of backstabbing people. So the game can definitely go off the rails with certain groups where everyone just picks on one player and then it just kind of goes to, you know, it goes all over the place. Uh, but, you know, even towards the end, some players aren't going to want to totally destroy that player because in the end it's points. And if, you know, if some other players have gotten more points for destroying them, then you're going to want the game to last a little longer. Maybe take them out instead. Maybe tell them you're going to go there, but then not. Uh, but it can sort of, it has the possibility of going off the rails with certain groups. Um, now, this is a pretty mean game, so it might be too mean for some. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those things where you are messing with people over, you are lying to people, and people might not like that. So just be aware that that's there. Uh, and I felt like the game, uh, it, it overstayed its welcome a little bit. It says 30 to 45 minutes. It's somewhat accurate, even with the timed stages. Uh, but it felt like, you know, I guess depending on the game and the, and the people and what's happening and who's hitting who, that, you know, as the game arcs, as I told you, is a good thing, sometimes it can last a little long where people are trying to drag it out to get the most points they can, and there's probably sometimes a few more rounds than I would like in the game. I think it overstays its welcome just a little bit. Um, then we get to sort of the, my biggest pet peeve I'd say about the game are, you know, Sort of the cards. So the cards you get, those city cards with the abilities, they're a randomized card setup. Uh, and, and there's a possibility of them not being well balanced because it's all, uh, you know, it's all random. For example, one of the players in one of our games had uh, some, of the, some of the cards they had on their own board was gain eight missiles from the player to the left, and a different card was gain eight missiles to the player to your right. Okay, that's pretty powerful too, right? But they also get one dollar if anyone buys any of their missiles. They also had an ability that allowed them to buy missiles for one dollar. So anytime someone's buying one, they're getting a dollar, they can use that to buy a missile. And they had 16 total missiles from some of those. And they had two missiles was basically four points as opposed to four. So they had this crazy engine that worked really well, but they didn't really do anything to get it. It was just luck. And so that they synergized so well with those abilities that they just ran away with it. So what I'm saying is it can be unbalanced because it's a randomizer. What I would, would have liked to have seen a, a more thing uh, where everyone gets a certain amount of the really strong abilities, a certain amount of the medium abilities, a certain amount of the not so good abilities. At least that way it would have been more balanced. And now another player had a whole setup that that was not very synergistic. They had one that said, you know, discard two missiles to destroy, destroy a city. Well, at that point in the game, it was immediate and they didn't happen to have any missiles, so that didn't get them anything good. Um, they had one that had, uh, they had basically lots of zero money buildings, which were pretty powerful. And they had one that said, hey, one point for every $2 instead of four. So it was like some of the cards can always, you know, can work for you or not. One of them said always gain one nuke from the supply, but it came up late in the game where nobody had stuff, uh, you know, uh, buildings that were sequential. So nobody's really going to use a nuke that much anyway. So what I'm saying is, is that the balancing of the card seems off. The randomization, I think, seems off. Uh, but that's a, you know, that's my biggest quibble with the game. Overall, the game was enjoyable. Uh, it's not something I'll be itching to get back to the table a lot. It's not one that I think stands out. Uh, but if you like the nostalgic of Atari, you like negotiation games, this might be one that you want to check out, and that's Missile Command. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.